सेवेंटींथ श्लोक है योगोस्ति नशदो न जय गांधम मनजनदम न जादि स्वप्नशील से नादि जागर दोर्जुन योगा कैन नॉट बी योगा वोट वर्क अति अशता इफ यू फील योर स्टॉमक होल हार्टली न जय कांतम अनशनता योगा कैन नॉट बी पॉसिबल इफ यू डोंट ईट एट ऑल न जाति स्वप्नशील से योगा कैन नॉट बी पॉसिबल इफ यू ओनली स्लीप डे एंड नाइट ट्वेल्व आवर्स जस्ट लाइक बीस्ट ना दी जागर तो अर्जुन ये ओल हो अर्जुन इफ यू बी वेकफुल फॉर द होल नाइट दैट वे आल्सो योगा इज नॉट पॉसिबल नाउ अबिलो मुफ्ता हैज कमेंटेड अपॉन इन सच ए वे दिस श्लोक ऑफ भगवद गीता व्हिच आई डोंट एक्सेप्ट फॉर 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 दिस i have i have come to to do some amendment of this comment commentary of abhinav gupta here do you understand yes from verse huh what verse 17 17th and 18th 17th and 18th both together yukta har viharasya युक्त ज्येष्ठाई कर्मसो युक्त स्वप्न बोधश योगो बौद्धि दुख ऑल दो दिस वर्ष ऑफ भगवदगीता व्यास इज कम्प्लीट बट अबेन गोसा हेज नॉट कमेंटेटेड अपॉन एज आई आई वुड कमेंटेट ऑन ऑन दिस श्लोक He has commented. I will tell, tell you his comment, commentary, his pa, first commentary in his first life. Ahar means arhi maneshu visheshu. When when you will go here and there, this is ahar. Yukta ahar does not mean eating. युक्ताहर मीन शब्द स्पर्श रूप ऑल सेंसुअल प्लेजर्स इन सेंसुअल प्लेजर्स वॉट यू शुड डू कीप इट ऑन वन साइड विहार विहार मीन्स विहार उपभोगाय प्रवृत्ति विहार मीन्स टू एंजॉय सेंसुअल ऑब्जेक्ट This is the Abhinavgupta's first commentary. Tasyaccha yukta tam. Yukt yukt means na atyanta asakti na atyanta parivarjana. You should not be slave slave for those enjoyments, and neither you should be slave nor you should be nor you should. renounce it renunciation is also not good and to be slave of those enjoyments that is also not good that is yukta yukta tha evam sarvatra in in this way you should come come and comment it upon upon these shlokas of vyasa like this it is abhinav gupta's first commentary but i don't appreciate this kind of युक्त आहार युक्त आहार मीन्स टेक फूड गो ऑन टेकिंग फूड एज मच एज मच फूड एज यू कैन टेक गो ऑन टेकिंग इट बट कीप अवेयरनेस इन इट वेल टेकिंग फूड ऑफर इट टू योर ओन गॉड that is yukta har yukta har means when you eat food go on eating with awareness 
go on focusing on it is taste which taste whatever whatever you eat and there will be one point in it maintain one point in this while while eating maintain one point in it is my my amendment maintain one point in this in sleeping you can sleep but maintain one point in this in sleeping be aware in sleeping if you sleep be aware don't be just like sluggish bear sleeping put put the trick of yoga in it this is my new commentary on this bhagavad gita yukta hara vihara se yukta chesta se karma su when you have to do activities of daily routine of your life do all the daily routine of life but don't don't lose your internal yoga at the same time you go on go on practicing it inside you mean watching your breath watching your breath and don't don't be taken taken by these activities of life daily routine of life you to sopna and when when you dream go to dream go with awareness when you dream you you will enter in samadhi at the uh, at the time of dreaming state you won't go in dreaming dreaming state at that time you will go in samadhi while dreaming you to sopn out both the same and when you are awake be awake, awake with with yoga yoga about the dukha then yoga is very easy everywhere yoga is available to you this is my commentary new commentary and this has i believe gupta's new commentary you should know that so i had to um, put amendment on this commentary योगोस्ति नैवादिषदो न जय गांधम मनश्नदम न चारि स्वप्नशीलस्य नादि जागरदोर्जुनम युक्त मीन्स यजुर योगे इट इज पाणिनीज अकॉर्डिंग टू पाणिनीज ग्रामर ग्रामर युक्त मीन्स विद योग पुट योग attached to all your activities of your uh, uh, daily routine of life and yoga will be very easy, e- easily achieved yoga cannot be achieved in one corner and if you lock your do- door from outside and sit you will be just waste wasting your time inside you will be idols work workshop is dem, demon what yes. don't do like that come out in field and see yoga wonderful and i think the bottom line of this one is to fill, fill yourself fill, um, fill your life with awareness in everything you do and we start that in, in, in the beginning with our practice by watching your breath at the as a beginner and starting just to just to be aware in all all activities that's why when you eat eat with awareness when you sleep sleep with awareness it's just everything is is to be filled with subjective awareness that's what it is it's it's, a, it's an interesting point a lot of people comment on on having this state of what's called lucid dreaming where you're kind of aware that you're dreaming and and it comes the more you meditate 
And Swamiji says, don't waste your time in that dream. Um, start, if you're aware that you're dreaming, start watching your breath. And he said, you'll see, he said in this verse, he says, you'll go into Samadhi really, really quickly. You'll go into a very deep state very quickly. You may drift off into deep sleep then, but whenever you have that, that opportunity, um, you know, that's, that's the time you, whenever you remember to watch your breath and, and there's some grace involved in that, the grace to actually remember to do it. Um, you just, that's, that's the trick. That's the yukti. That's, that's, you know. And there's another way to remember to watch your breath when you're asleep, because, you know, it, it kind of probably sounds pretty hard when you're asleep because you're not, you don't seem to be conscious. And that's by what Swamiji said is to meditate in all the activities of the day. When you're eating, when you're smelling, when you're touching, when you're hearing, you know, when you're tasting, all of those. And he said, automatically, if you do that throughout the day, then, then when you go to sleep, you'll automatically have that awareness and be able to enter into that gap um, between um, waking and, and, and um, dreaming. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple questions here, a few. Let me start off with Julie. This has to do with meditation. In meditation, should we consciously try to slow the breath or just observe it as, as it is? When I focus on the pause, usually the pause becomes long and the breath short. Beautiful, good question. Um, no, we don't consciously try to slow the breath. I, I've said a few times, but I, I always want to say it more because if you consciously shorten the breath, then it becomes a chore. It becomes difficult. And what happens is if you sit in meditation, after some time, the breath becomes slower by itself. It just starts to slow down naturally. And... And then you observe it as it is, of course. You observe the pauses between the two breaths. Um, and is it and okay? that's a good sign if, if the pause becomes longer. Mm. Automatically. And automatically and the breath short. Mm. So you're doing, it, you're doing it fine. You're doing it right. We just let it happen. We, we remain innocent. We don't expect anything. We just do the practice and leave the rest to God. Thank you. So there's a statement from Ratan where he says, in fact, both Abhinava Gupta and Swamiji are saying the same thing. Abhinava Gupta in this verse preaches for a balance, not too much, not too little, in brief, a madhyama. Swamiji says, watch your breath practice internal yoga, which is also the Madhyama root. They're both pointing towards the same thing, pranams, ratan. There, there, is, a, there is a subtle difference. Um, Swamiji was, was excited. You see, this verse traditionally says that, and, and, and people who study Ayurveda and yoga know that the, the text, the classical texts say that you should fill your stomach um, half with food you should fill it quarter with water and you should leave a quarter of a space left for breath, for air to pass. That's, that's a classical yoga take. And um, what Swamiji is saying here is that if you're totally focused on those three things, then in a sense, you're not really enjoying the food. You're, you're, you're really conscious of, of how much, it's good to know that, and it's good if you can do that, and it's natural. But his, his whole uh, take on this, and as we've said in, in some of the earlier chapters of Bhagavad Gita, your eating should be like a, a meditation in itself. You should enjoy the taste. You should go into the taste of the food, relish the food, eat really fresh, and if somebody would always say eat fresh and really good food, wholesome food, and just, uh, you know, take it in and uh, Ian has said, you know, these are symptoms, they're not rules so much. And these, these are symptoms of that state. Um, I remember once uh, somebody said or something to, to, uh, to me, do you have to get up at 4 a.m. to get enlightened? <laughs> and 
my take is I think you have to get enlightened to get up at 4 a.m. <laughs> it, that, then it's an automatic process. But there's no, no harm if people get up at 4 a.m. and meditate. That's wonderful. Swamiji would encourage that if it's natural and it's not making you, like he said, too tired. And what Ratan's saying is, is right. That's moderation in everything. But uh, feed, feed your gods, Swamiji said in that verse. Your senses are, you've given, you've given this energy to your own senses. Your own soul has, has, has produced this, this wonderful body, which is full of gods and goddesses and devies. And you have a whole universe there to enjoy within the body and a universe out there to enjoy. This is what Swamiji is saying in this verse, but do it with awareness. Just one other point, he said, he said that's sitting in your meditation room and it ended up with, you know, that the, the idle mind is the devil's, you know, playground. Um, it, it doesn't refute what we, we learned in the last chapter, that this idea of sannyas yoga and karma yoga, they are integrated. And like Denise said, if you do your meditation during the day, and you, you mix that with your formal meditation, or one, one person, Alice, called it cushion meditation, what will happen is you'll have that awareness during dreams and sleep or in the junction points. Isn't Swamiji also saying more, though? <laughs> Isn't Swamiji in this saying that this is the new revelation for him being reborn? Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's saying that he's being, he's he was reborn from um as Abhin, uh, from Abhinava Gupta, right? That's that's the that's the underlying in this, isn't yes. it? Yes. He makes that point. He does make that point. He wants us to know that. So you should know that. And many of Swamiji's devotees um felt that he was Abhinava Gupta, the way he taught and and you know the bliss that he spread around and awareness, you know, to his disciples. And I remember one time I was there and Swamiji was talking about Abhinava Gupta and he was, he, he's always very animated when he speaks of him. And, um, and I said, I think you're Abhinava Gupta. This was years ago. And he just smiled. He didn't say anything. He wouldn't confirm. And um, yeah, he was. He is. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's, it's an interesting point because for many years, um, from the time Swamiji actually came out of a, a sort of more uh, seclusion and living in his first ashram, which was very, um, very sort of in, in the middle of the forest when he first went there in 1933. Um, as soon as he started teaching uh, scholars and, and a lot of devotees around him said, you know, you teach, you, you understand Abhinava Gupta so much. And Swamiji got this, this title in Kashmir as Abhinava Gupta. He never said anything about that. He said, he, he just, he never said, yes, okay. Uh, after 1989 and 90, he had this very universal experience. And then he kind of just nodded and accepted like Denise said, he, if people said, you know, you are. And, and in this thing, he said, yes, I've come back to rekindle, you know, this teaching. That's what I told you in the past. And this is what I'm telling you now. And Basically, in Shaivism, it's it's a complete um, identification with the whole lineage of masters, but especially for Swamiji with Abhinava Gupta, who he, he held in, in highest esteem.